Game development has changed a lot over the years. The games got better graphics, the gameplay is more complex, and the game studios in general have gotten bigger and bigger. But there's one thing that almost all game developers agree on. The unspoken rule. The best AAA games follow that rule and small indie games such as Minecraft do as well. You die, you lose. Now what if we completely broke that rule and reversed that mechanic? You need to look for a way to die, but it's almost impossible to do so. Would it make us the best or worst game developers of all time? So we're gonna make a game where you need to lose to win. To start off, we need to open Unity. And here we are. Where to begin? We quickly slapped on some player movement, which was fairly easy. I mean, there's literally a 5 minute tutorial for that, so... The graphics look a tiny bit too simplistic though. It's time for some fire visuals. Just to let you know, the theme we're going for is like deserty, sandy type vibe. For our player, let's head to this Bing AI image generator. Not gonna lie, all of them look cute as fuck. Normally AI just spits out some hideous creature that shouldn't be existing in any realm, but all of them look pretty decent. I think this one is the best though, so we're gonna use him for the game. We're gonna call you George. George, your mission today is to die. In game, of course. Moving on to the background, we just stole an image from Pinterest. George will live in this desert right here. Now what we want to also add is a parallax effect. What is a parallax effect, you might ask? To the two people that want to actually know, it's basically layers that move at different speeds or directions when the camera moves. Or better said, a displacement or difference in the apparent position of an object viewed along two different lines of sight. The effect is used in basically every platformer game and in web design as well. Danny fortunately has a great tutorial for that, and we just followed every single step of his video. Please come back, man. The kids miss you. The problem is that you need individual layers of the background image to make that effect happen. And our image is very much one layer. One single PNG file. Totally fine, we just need to cut every single part of the image into its own pieces. Yeah, no problem at all. We spent the next 30 minutes just doing that. It was challenging, we had to use some insane Photoshop skills, but we did it. We have individual layers to do the effect now. Now let's put all that stuff into our Unity projects, and voila, a pretty decent looking game. Is everything stolen or AI generated? Maybe. But as long as it looks cool, it's fine, right? We've got a shader, a cute owl with this bounce animation when walking and jumping, and even some fire music. What more can you dream of as a game developer? Yeah, the parallax effect is kind of buggy sometimes, but we're just gonna blame Danny for that and move on. Next up, it's time for the fun mechanics that make the game unique. We will create 5 levels, with each level getting more complex and creative with the way you can die, or at least try to die. And the last level is going to be the biggest troll level, which will decide if it's the worst or best game of all time. Now let's start with level 1. What is the easiest way to die in a game? Probably just walk into some random spike. So we just place this little guy right here. Now I just have to walk into, ah, what is going on? You can't die. That's literally going to be the first level of the game. No matter what you try, the spike will always be moving away from you. But there's one secret hack to win this level. Let me explain how we did it. We defined this update method, which basically always tracks our player, George. There are two states for George. He's either moving or not moving. Let's say you're moving towards the spike. If you get into the collision range of the spike, some fancy math will be done and calculate some stuff and move away from you the moment you reach its range. It basically gives you the illusion that you could reach the spike, but it's hard coded that you really can't. What happens if you're not moving though? There's a variable that begins counting the moment you stop walking. If you're standing still, the counter will go up and up until it reaches 10 seconds or above. Once the threshold is met, you guessed it, the spike will move towards the player and actually kill it, which basically means you will be teleported to the next level. To some people this code might look really complicated, but it's really not. That was a good introduction for the game. The next level is going to be a little different. You'll have two things you could potentially die from, but not really. We firstly made this giant hole in the middle of the game and added this barrier or bridge you can just walk over. If you're actually in the game though, the bridge isn't there, until the seconds before you were to actually fall into the giant pit of doom. Pretty neat, right? We also added these very deadly cactuses. C cacti? Very deadly cactuses. But right before you walk into their deadly spikes, ah, uh, they're gone. Yeah, you can't actually die because of them. Very creative, we know. To be totally honest with you, we did kind of cheat with a giant hole. If you look into the code, you can see that the only change that happens when you walk into the trigger range of the hole is that the sprite renderer is true. That basically means it's only a visual change and the barrier that appears is always there but just not visually apparent when you're not in that trigger zone. Now the cactuses work very similar but you can actually die from them. See, it actually says killable right there. So the cactus works exactly as the bridge. The spike turns off once you step into its trigger zone. But there's one exception. If you actually walk off the map in an attempt to unalive yourself, you get the killable tag. Instead of dying or fall damage, you get teleported right back to the map except that there happens to be a cactus that, well, not really kills you but loads you up into the next scene as always. 
Now I think level 3 is my favorite level of all time. We combined all the previous levels and made a bigger area to walk around. And every single thing could kill you, but just won't. We've got these cactuses again, the spike, the big hole, but none of them actually work. But before actually telling you what it is, we changed the spike into an actual spike and not this weirdly shaped diamond that just sticks out of the ground. Now, coming back how you actually win. You might know of quicksand. Everyone was afraid of it as a kid because it looks very scary in movies. Just imagine slowly descending into it with no way of escaping. Well, this sand actually happens to be quicksand as well. You can just walk around, but once you actually press S on your keyboard, you'll slowly but surely sink into the quicksand and eventually win or lose the level, depending on how you see it. Now there's one level left before making the biggest troll level of all time. For level 4, we added a pit of lava or water, depending on if you want to unalive yourself or not. Right before you step into the lava, it turns into a refreshing pool for George. Making liquid look good is way too difficult, so we just made a lot of balls and blurred them. They kind of behave like liquid, but it doesn't really seem like it. We're not a AAA studio with 50 game developers, alright? I mean, look how the water looks in Minecraft. Now, we also wanted to add a rock that stomps everything in its way, except George, of course. But instead of doing that, it looks more like a failed rocket experiment. Like, bro, where are you going? To try to fix that, we added waypoints where the rock actually stomps down, and it mostly works. Mostly. But before debugging all that stuff, we decided to give the rock some texture. Instead of asking AI as always, we actually did that part ourselves, cause it was easy enough to do. And you can't really see it in game, which is quite unfortunate. Really wasted 15 minutes for nothing again. Now we also fixed the issues, and the rock now actually stomps correctly into the ground. And right before Dodge actually wins the game and dies, the rock stops. Kind of cool, right? There's one exception though, as always. If you actually stay in the water pit and wait for the rock to come to you, he will grant you access to the next level by smushing you. Let's move on to the last level of the game. Will George finally complete it and die? We built the last level similar to the third level, just way longer. You can walk for ages, and I mean ages, and there won't be a single cactus, hole, or rock that can kill you. Not even the spikes will work. I mean, look how long the level is. You can try every single thing from the previous levels. Literally nothing can kill you. The only thing that changed is that you can weirdly jump higher. And that's the only clue you have. But before revealing how you can actually win the game, you might want to check out the first link in the description if you want to actually learn how to make games like us as well. And how to get started and stuff. It's a free PDF. Get it if you want to. Don't get it if you don't want to. So how do you die in the last level? This level is as stupid, if not the stupidest level of all of them. You already know that this this level is huge, but walking to your right will lead to nothing. At the end you will literally just fall down and respawn. The key to winning is to use the invisible wall that is normally used to stop players from escaping. But this game is different, because you can actually jump very very high, you can manage to jump over the invisible barrier of the game. It might seem like a bug, but it's actually intentional this time. Now if you take a few steps in this unrestricted area, well you actually manage to die in the game. And with that, George finally wins the game. Now is it the best or worst game of all time? I don't know, you decide. Subscribe.